We have an appearance from Logan Paul, a huge women's tag team championship match, and we will once again hear from the man himself, Bray Wyatt. Hey guys, how you all doing? The Wrestling Guy back here today and welcome to another episode of Smackdown Breakdown, the series where we break down everything that's happened on this week's Smackdown, talk about some of the matches that took place, talk about some of the moments that happened backstage and obviously what does this all mean moving forward to our next premium live event which is Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia on the 5th of November, so just a couple of weeks away from that now. So, in today's episode, guys, we're going to break down everything that happened on last week's SmackDown and uh, yeah, go through uh, all, of the, all of the details with you. So, if you guys do go on to enjoy, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. And do go and turn that notification bell on so you don't miss any of the content that we've got planned coming up for you guys here on the channel. Also, please do go and check us out on our podcast, Let's Talk Wrestling. Uh, we talk about WWE, AEW, um, really good really good discussions on there so please do go and check us out on spotify or wherever you listen to your podcasts please do also go and follow us on instagram just look for that little wrestling guy logo and also on facebook uh, all of the links that you'll need will be in the banner and also in the description below so without further ado let's break down this week's episode of smackdown so we would kick things off with a huge one-on-one match between Sheamus and the Bloodlines solo Sokoa. So obviously this has ignited a little bit of a rivalry from a match that happened on last week's episode of SmackDown, um, which was the fatal four-way match to determine the new number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. Now, this was a really, really good match uh, between these two. Um, when I was watching the fatal four-way match on last week's episode of SmackDown, I remember saying to myself that this is going to be um, this, we could see some new rivalries forming here between Sokoa and Ricochet, uh, Ricochet and Sheamus, Sheamus and Sokoa. So I'm really glad that they're kind of uh, picking up on that a little bit. And uh, here we're going to see Solo Sokoa and Sheamus. Um, very back and forth match. There were points where you thought both guys were going to win it. Um, some punishing offense being delivered by Sokoa to Sheamus. Uh, it, 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 was, it was a shame because the, kind of the, the finish was kind of as a result of an interference from the bloodline. Um, Obviously, uh, Soko would go for the Uranagi and then get the get the one two three. But I think what I was I was exp I, I kind of went into this match with high expectations because I'm a big fan of Sheamus and I'm a big fan of Solo Sokoa. So this was a this was a really important one to me. I thought that the Bloodline was going to get involved, but I didn't think it was going to paint a massive picture towards the finish. I didn't think it was going to be another interference finish because WWE seem to, do seem to be enjoying their interference finishes at the moment so that was a bit of a shame. After the match we would see um, the Bloodline um, uh, attack and, and brutalise Sheamus uh, resulting in him having an arm injury um, and the, close, the segment would close with obviously Soda Sokoa winning the match and the Bloodline standing tall over the brawling brutes again. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to keep an eye on what that means over the next couple of weeks. Will we see Seamus maybe go for one of the members of the Bloodline? Will we see the Brawling Brutes, uh, Rich Holland and Butch maybe, go after the, uh, the, the, uh, the WWE Tag Team Champions, the Usos? We shall see. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think is going to happen. Up next, we had a backstage segment from Bray Wyatt, the man himself. Um, now, he left us on a humongous cliffhanger last week. I was among the many, many wrestling fans that were itching to find out what is happening with this Bray Wyatt character and we were left on a huge cliffhanger last week so we were kind of going into this one hoping we were going to get a few kind of questions answered, a few pages maybe filled in. Um, now he, he, he kind of followed on with the same kind of style that he did in last week's episode of Smackdown. He kind of was speaking into the camera, he was um, talking about himself and how the fans have had a huge influence on his life and his um, his purpose for living is the fans. Um, but if you guys remember rightly last week's episode of SmackDown, we got that last minute interruption by the man in the mask. Um, and it kind of was really, really good. It kind of was playing on that Jekyll and Hyde kind of feel of kind of uh, Bray Wyatt's um, personal side, his the, the, the part of Bray Wyatt that is himself and that other side of him, that dark side that creeps out and takes control. Um, and that was why in his promo last week he did uh, turn around and say, 
this is a side of me that you guys have never seen before. Um, and it was, it was a beautiful bit of storytelling. It's fantastically done. I, I'm just over, over the moon with what they're doing with this from a creativity perspective so far. Um, Triple H and the creative forces at the minute are um, doing a fantastic job with this story. Um, and what I like about this story is that they're taking their time. There's no rush in it. There's no saying we have to force this character onto people's screens as quickly as we can. They're making us want to tune into SmackDown every single week to see what the next clue is, what the next part of the puzzle is that we're going to be able to, to fill in. And gradually, bit by bit, we're starting to get a few more ideas. Um, and I just want to read a couple of words that Bray Wyatt said in this week that really kind of stuck out to me. So um, he says, I confess that I have problems. I know I have problems. I've always had problems. It's not hard for people to see. So that's kind of playing on uh, what he was saying about last week when he was going on about how um, he's suffering with all of these mental problems. He's not knowing who he is. He's struggling with um, his identity, obviously, um, the loss of, of important members of his life and things like that. Um, and he also said, I needed you. I needed all of you. You removed the spears from my ribs and pulled me up. Again, playing on that, what he was saying last week about how the WWE universe is his life and how that they um, have saved him, basically. He says, I'm thankful for that because now I can see I know who you are and I know what you want. Now, this is where it, it slowly starts kind of turning the other way and we start seeing a different side of Bray Wyatt. Um, kind of going into that darker side and then he finishes off by saying I know along the way I will do horrible horrible things but I will not be sorry for them I am just a servant now I go where the circle takes me and then he finishes with a little wink to the camera wow some very very powerful stuff here um, and it doesn't leave us with a lot kind of going into next week we're just itching I'm just itching I want to watch the next week's episode of Smackdown now so we can see where this is going to take us further but this is great some really really good storytelling and I'm really excited to see what this kind of holds please do let me know down below in the comment section try and help the wrestling guy out here what's going to happen with this Bray Wyatt storyline what what do you think is going to happen what are we going to see in the coming weeks what's going to unfold where is this going so many questions that need to be answered I'm hoping that this kind of opens up a couple of, of different avenues we can start looking down we'll see uh, but then we come on to our next match of the evening. It was Liv Morgan versus Sonya Deville. Now, Liv Morgan, my favourite, favourite thing that's happening on SmackDown at the minute is Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's no other word for it. She's just absolutely fantastic. And this match uh, lived up to all expectations. Um, obviously, we saw last week uh, that Sonia Deville was having a promo back, uh, a, a backstage interview, sorry, um, and she was saying about Liv Morgan constantly being handed opportunities that she just throws away. Liv Morgan would then respond with um, with a with an attack on Sonia Deville, and then doing that sent on off of the off of the scaffolding. This is again showing that intense, that aggressive, that unhinged side of Liv Morgan that we're starting to see kind of creep out, creep out. Um, and we see that in this match as well. She was daring Sonia Deville to punish her with 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 strikes and. Um, and kind of she was it was getting to the point she was becoming frustrated because Sonya Deville wasn't attacking her to, to the full amount that she should be attacking her um, and then that would result in, in Morgan unleashing her brutal side and attacking uh, Sonya Deville down to the mat um, the end result would be um, that the, the two women would end up um, both being counted out so the match would finish with a double count out uh, after the match, Morgan would create a pile of steel chairs in the centre of the ring and delivered a huge superplex onto them. Um, now, I think it's fair to say Morgan has been massively affected by uh, the defeat by Ronda Rousey at Extreme Rules, where she lost her SmackDown Women's Championship. Um, she finds joy in kind of the pain and suffering of her opponents and also herself as well because these moves that she's hitting are having these huge impacts on her opponents but also on her as well so uh, really interesting to see kind of what that is all about um, I'm not really sure where this is heading it's another it's another story that I'm not really sure where this is heading um, how far into this kind of changing character will if Morgan actually go um, but this is an absolute fantastic way of keeping Liv Morgan relevant after losing her championship. Um, 
it's very easy for, for a superstar once they've lost the title to kind of kind of drift to the back of the line a little bit. So this is a really good way of taking the belt off of Liv Morgan, but still keeping her hugely relevant as if she's actually a champion. I think we've seen more from Liv Morgan in the past couple of weeks than we have of Ronda Rousey, who is now the new SmackDown Women's Champion. So we'll have to keep, um, keep an eye out on that. A couple of notes I did pick up on this match, though. Uh, Liv Morgan sporting a gear inspired by Harley Quinn. Is this tipping a hat maybe to, uh, to this new character that we're seeing from her? Her new uh, kind of on-screen persona? Um, and obviously, uh, again, great commentary by the, uh, the new commentary team of Michael Cole and Wade Barrett. Absolutely love them. I've got, I just got to say, as, as, a, as a duo on commentary, absolutely fantastic. Um, Michael Cole pointing out that Morgan lacked the aggression of her recent performances and found herself on the defensive as a result. So this could be why we're seeing this more aggressive side of Liv Morgan coming out. Um, so up next, we would have a face-to-face -face confrontation between Braun Strowman and Omos. So... MVP would issue a warning to Braun Strowman on Monday um, on behalf of Amos that they were going to be on SmackDown and they wanted to have a face-to-face -face with the Monster Among Monsters. Um, Strowman, we know what Braun Strowman is like. He's, he's completely unfazed by this. He's not, not intimidated by anybody. And he would um, come down to the ring and call out the massive giant. Um, the two big men would be in the ring having a face-off. There would be some pushing and shoving. And then uh, Omos would shove Strowman to the floor. Um, this is 100% setting up for a match. I wouldn't be surprised if in the coming weeks we hear that this is going to be a match that's announced for Crown Jewel. Um, I, as, as I've mentioned in my previous episodes, I don't think that this is going to be a stellar match. This is definitely not going to be a match you're going to, going to want to remember. I think it's going to be a very clumsy, hard-hitting match. Um, but it'd be interesting to see kind of what these guys kind of do. Um, and funny to say that, actually, because then we would go on to Braun Strowman calling out uh, Omos for Clash at the Castle. Uh, no, Crown Jewel, sorry. Crown Jewel. Uh, and he would say, uh, he would challenge Omos to a match at Crown Jewel where uh, MVP would say, on behalf of the Nigerian giant, I accept. Backstage, Drew McIntyre would then also reveal that he will be battling Karrion Cross at Crown Jewel in a steel cage match, which I cannot wait for. That's going to be absolutely huge. Looking forward to see what happens with that one. Uh, our next match of the evening would be Raquel Rodriguez and Shotzi versus Damage Control's Io Sky and Dakota Kai in a Women's Tag Team Championship match. Um, I was really looking forward to this match. I'm a big fan of all four of these women. Uh, damage Control, one of my favourite parts of WWE at the minute. I think they're great. Um, and I'm a huge fan of Shotzi and Raquel as well. Um, just great to finally see uh, Shotzi back on TV because uh, it was, it's been a little while since we've actually seen a lot from her and I think she's a, she's a massively underrated and uh, really talented wrestler. So uh, as expected, uh, the action would, wouldn't take long to break down. Um, we were obviously going to see an interference from Bailey at some point, uh, but again, it was another interference finish where we would see Bailey interfere. This would then lead to EO Sky uh, uh, pinning Shotzi following the, obviously her her moonsault finish. Um, the match, the match itself was really quite good. Um, some great offense and defense by both both teams. There was no kind of there was no. There was none of them that kind of outdid the other. They all kind of did their bit that they needed to do. But I'd kind of say, especially the last sort of five minutes or so of the match, it felt very, very rushed. And it felt like it was kind of, they were punching a time clock and they said, well, we have to do the X, Y, and Z in the next couple of minutes. So we'll just do everything we can and just wrap it up. Um, so that kind of spoiled it a little bit. Um, I think it was predictable that EO Sky and Dakota Kai were going to win because they were, making quite a big point about them having the, the titles. And I think that the end result, the end conclusion they're going to try and reach is to have the, all of the damage control members um, holding titles. Because uh, obviously bailey has got a match with Bianca Belair on Raw. It is a non-title match, but this is bound to set up for, for a title match again at some point. Um, the crowd uh, seemed really behind Shotzi and Raquel as well, which I was really pleased about. Um, and this is, this is great for them on, on the SmackDown division. So... I wouldn't mind seeing another match between these these two teams actually because I think they'd be really good together. So we'll see what happens. 
The next match of the evening would be the new number one contender for the Intercontinental title, Rey Mysterio and Imperium's Ludwig Kaiser. So, uh, just before we get into this match, Legado del Fantasma would cut a promo backstage um, and we'll talk about obviously their upcoming dom dominance on SmackDown. Um, we know Hit Row aren't going to take too kindly to this, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a retaliation from Hit Row maybe next week on SmackDown, but we'll have to see. So, we would have a face-off between um, uh, Ludwig Kaiser of Imperium. Obviously, like I said, Rey Mysterio does have the number one contender spot for the, uh, for the IC title, currently held by Imperium leader Gunther. Um, this was going to be a big test for, for Rey Mysterio, because um, this is... Ludwig Kaiser is an up-and-coming wrestler. Um, Rey Mysterio is kind of a, a veteran of the sport. Um, now this this was this was a really this was really nicely done how they did this match. Um, obviously, we had um, the presence of uh, Giovanni Vinci and Gunther at ringside. Um, Mysterio took inspiration from from Eddie Guerrero and lied, cheated, and stole his way to victory, which was absolutely fantastic and a nice little. Uh, nice little homage there to, uh, to Eddie Guerrero. Um, when Gunther and Giovanni Vinci were booted from ringside, um, he, he would then use that as an opportunity to put Kaiser away for the victory. Um, th this was good uh, f for me because this was kind of the, the match that Rey Mysterio needed to kind of prove that he can hang with the young up-and-coming stars on SmackDown. Um, And it would also kind of give a little nod, I think, to Eddie Guerrero as well to kind of say that he will use the experience, to use the knowledge and the, the, the training that he got from some of the veterans of the sport like Eddie um, in order to, to get his way out of trouble and to get his way to victory. So the storytelling is absolutely superb in this match. And yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing um, maybe Rey Mysterio and Giovanni Vinci uh, have a match as well. Um, and Rey Mysterio and Gunther, that's going to be that's going to be one hell of a match. I can't wait for that one. That's going to be really good. Uh, we would then close the show from hearing uh, by hearing from the man who will challenge Roman Reigns for the undisputed WWE World Championship at Crown Jewel. It is Logan Paul, so he would return and um, cut a promo on Roman Reigns ahead of obviously his match, their match at Crown Jewel. This was obviously opening up for, for a sneak attack by one of the members of the bloodline and it would be Jey Uso who'd come out as well um, and obviously with Sami Zayn um, they would start spouting off Logan Paul and Logan Paul would actually hit a right hand on uh, Jey Uso um, which would um, which would uh, leave Jey Uso led out on the mat and a very shot Sami Zayn as well some really really good selling here by Sami Zayn um, I, th I think that this is this is good TV exposure for Logan Paul before this event. Um, obviously, we haven't seen a lot from Roman Reigns recently, um, so I think we do need a bit of exposure from both of them. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe we see if we see Roman Reigns come out next week on SmackDown as kind of a a, um, a retaliation to what happened this week with Logan Paul. Um, but this is also playing on that storyline with Jay Uso and Sami Zayn still as well about how they're not completely firing on all cylinders together. Jey Uso is kind of uh, on thin ice with the bloodline, so I'm really excited to see where this story goes as well. Uh, just a couple of quotes I picked up on in this match that Logan Paul said. He said, um, I've been doubted my whole life and look where I am now. A guy who calls himself... S s oh, this is what he said to Solo Sokoa. He said, a guy who calls himself Solo, but personally I've never seen alone. No one expects me to step in the ring with the GOAT and actually win, but what happens if I do? And this is playing on what he said when he first challenged Roman Reigns for the title, where he said it only takes one lucky punch. And I really, really liked that. I thought it was a really, really good bit of storytelling. Um, and I think he's done an absolutely fantastic job with this. Uh, really excited for this match, actually. A lot of people are making a huge mockery, a huge joke of this, this match between these two. I think it'll be good. Uh, I think we all know that Roman Reigns is going to win the title. He's going he's to retain the title. But at the end of the day, there's no reason this still can't have a really good match and there's no reason that this can't lead to, to some bigger things for Logan Paul and Roman Reigns going forward so we'll have to see what happens let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of, of Crown Jewel obviously we will be doing our predictions and review as always here on the channel and on our podcast so please do let us know thank you guys for watching and thank you to all listeners on the Let's Talk Wrestling podcast and I will see you in the next one